What does your son look like? Uh, white beard, long hair, ponytail. Is he heavy? Yes. Does he have glasses? Yes. What's his name? Alex. 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 Okay. Um, you said he's 20 years old. 22. Okay. Okay. 22. And he works. He just came home from work. No. Like, no. No. Usually no. comes home from work yeah. about this. Yeah, Does he drive get, or walk? He walks or takes an Uber. I can't get a hold of him. Takes an Uber. Okay. Alex Becker, 32, was shot and killed on a cold night as he made his way back home from work on December 27th. What was to be a routine drive back home from an office job downtown turned into tragedy, soon to be remembered for waves of grief and outrage by the victim's family and friends, and a greater community of St. Paul. A jury on Tuesday found a St. Paul man guilty in the murder of 22-year-old Alex Becker, who was shot six times in an alley behind his North End home after walking home from work last December. It was a case that had left many questions open to safety, violence, and justice in the heart of one of Minnesota's most populous cities. Alex Becker was a responsible man, a hard-working man, one of those persons who would do anything for his family and friends. He had been working as a financial analyst and would often have to work late, especially when a deadline was more urgent than on regular days. Christmas Eve, before we go to bed, I always uh, take a picture of them together. This right here is my last picture of, of them together. December 27th was one of those nights when a certain project kept him in the office longer. It was not uncommon for him to walk home, as his apartment was only a few blocks away. Alex's routine was simple. Leave work, grab a cup of coffee from his favorite corner shop, and walk through the quiet streets of St. Paul to his home, where his wife and young son waited for him. It was a walk he'd done dozens of times without incident, but that night, fate had other plans. It was just after 9 o'clock as Alex came out of the office building. The temperature was below freezing, and the streets bore an eerie silence with only the crunch of snow under his feet and the soft reflection of street lights from the skating rink-like ice. Alex's breath showed up as a white mist as he hurried homeward, his collar up against the nipping wind. He went his usual route, which took him into a narrow alley since that was the somewhat quicker way home. This alley, lined with dumpsters and rear entries of local shops, was not very well lit, but Alex, comfortable with everything around him being familiar, thought nothing out of the ordinary about it. It was at a point when he was just about halfway down that alleyway that the tragic encounter occurs. Surveillance cameras from a nearby business recorded Alex being confronted by an unknown individual. Although the footage was grainy, it did show a brief interaction between the two. It remains unclear what words, if any, were exchanged, but mere moments later, a gunshot pierced the cold night air. Alex collapsed to the ground, clutching his chest, as the assailant fled the scene and disappeared into the darkness. It was a local who first heard the gunshot, living in an apartment near the alley. He peered out the window and saw that Alex's body was lying on the ground, not moving. He immediately dialed 911, and minutes later, emergency responders were at the scene. Unfortunately, by the time the paramedics could get back to Alex, it was too late. He had died on his injuries before he was found. Alex's death sent shockwaves through the Saint, Paul community. His wife, Emily, was in pieces, trying to make sense of how such a senseless act of violence could take her husband away so suddenly. Their four-year-old son would have to grow up without his father. The days that followed were filled with tears, disbelief, and incomprehension from friends neighbors, and colleagues, who tried to comprehend the passing of a man well before his time. The killing immediately prompted an investigation in the hands of the saint, Paul Police Department, although it was clear from the very start that this was going to be an exceedingly difficult one. While the shooting itself was captured on camera, it was not very indicative as to who could have carried out the violence. The killer was wearing a hooded jacket over his head and failed to make any witnesses. Detectives went door to door, canvassing the neighborhood in hopes that a witness had seen or heard something to lead them to the shooter. But despite their best efforts, 
leads were scarce. Nothing seemed to point to a motive for the crime. Alex had no known enemies, any involvement with criminal activity, and no history of conflicts that would indicate why someone would want to hurt him. As days turned into weeks, it seemed as if the case was going nowhere. Without concrete evidence in one direction or another, not much work could be done by the police, it seemed, and frustration was building within Alex's family. Various community leaders called for justice granting vigils and rallies in Alex's memory, but still no arrests were made. The murder of Alex Becker had cast a long shadow over the saint, Paul Community. Gone were those nights when people could walk along the street, never looking over their shoulders as to whether such fate would fall on their head. The alley in which Alex was killed became symbolic of the plight the city found itself in with regard to crime. It called for the revisiting of local officials regarding how safe that part of town was. In the months following Alex's death, police presence in the neighborhood increased markedly. Patrol cars routinely drove through the streets. The city added new streetlights and security cameras across town in an effort to dissuade would-be perpetrators. But for most, this felt like too little, too late. She became an outspoken voice in calling for change, especially Emily Becker. She asked for more resources for victims' families, more funding for law enforcement, and even community outreach programs geared towards the prevention of violent crimes. Following her husband's death, she granted interviews to local media outlets, sharing her story in hopes of raising awareness and ensuring Alex's death was not in vain. A break in the case. It wasn't until six months after the murder that police finally got their break in the case. A call from a confidential informant gave detectives a violent offender. This career criminal had been in and out of the system for many years and was known to hang around where Alex had been killed. Detectives investigated and obtained enough evidence to arrest the suspect. For Alex's family, the arrest brought relief, yet it was bittersweet. Glad that the person responsible for Alex's death would face justice, it did little to ease the pain of losing a husband and a father. And as the process of justice unfolds, it is important to remember that Alex Becker was so much more than the victim of one act of violence to the St. Paul community. He was a husband, a father, and a contributing member of it. The tragedy has helped inspire crucial conversations about crime, justice, and just what will help protect and serve its people. In the end, the killing of Alex Becker drives home how fast and senselessly life can be taken. His case has left that indelible mark on all those who knew him and on the city of St. Paul as a whole. While his family and friends continue to fight for justice in his case, they work hard to make sure his memory is remembered and lives on. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more true crime stories and case updates. We'll keep you posted as the legal proceedings continue. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.